Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about two important tests in syphilis. Otherwise, there are a number of tests which can be performed in syphilis, but the most uh, commonly done tests are DPHA and VDRL. And in short, we will be discussing about both of these tests, DPHA and VDRL. So what is DPHA? DPHA stands for Trepanomal Pallidum Heme Agglutinin Test. This test is done for the confirmation of diagnosis of syphilis. So it is a confirmatory test. It's suppose if BDRL is reactive, it can have it can be because of some false positive uh, reactions as well. So to confirm if the patient is actually having syphilis or not, we need to do this confirmatory test, which is TPHA. But the problem with TPHA is that once positive, it always remains positive, even if the patient has undergone the full course of treatment. So the treatment does not alter the uh, reactivity or non-reactivity of TPHA. A patient of syphilis, once TPHA positive, will always be TPHA positive. Then why it is used? It is used for confirmation of care. Also, the titles of TPHA, they uh, correlate poorly with disease activity. So they cannot be used for monitoring purposes as well. So it is not like that uh, before the treatment, the TPHA titles will be more, and after the treatment, the TPHA titles will be uh, less. The correlation is kind of poor between the disease activity and TPHA titles. So more than TPHA titles, just the positivity and the negativity of the test is sufficient for us to declare if the patient is actually having syphilis or the patient is not having syphilis. So it is a confirmatory test and it cannot be used for monitoring of the disease. It cannot be used to detect if there is any reinfection or relapse of the treatment because it will be always positive. On the other hand, what is VDR? So VDR is stands for Venereal Disease Research Laboratory Test. This test in syphilis is done mostly to monitor the disease. It cannot be used for the diagnosis. It, obviously, we have to do it uh, uh, to do they have to do VDRL uh, test in syphilis, but there can be many cases where VDRL can be false positive. For example, in cases of autoimmune disorders, if the patient is uh, pregnant, then sometimes the patient can have false positivity or false reactivity for VDRL. So any reactive case of VDRL, any patient who is having a reactive VDRL has to be confirmed by TPHA. Then why is VDRL used? VDRL is basically used for monitoring of the disease. So we have to do a baseline, tick, a baseline title for VDRL. So we have to suppose if the baseline is around 1 to 8. And after the treatment, if we monitor, if there is a fourfold decrease in the VDRL title, then we say that the patient has, react, uh, has responded to the treatment adequately. But if the VDRL reactivity is increasing, we saw the, uh, the VDRL titles are increasing. If there is a four-fold increase in the VDRL title, that means the patient has not adequately responded to the treatment. So we need to have a baseline level for VDRL. What is the baseline title before starting with the treatment so that we are able to monitor if the patient has adequately responded to the treatment or not. It can be also used to detect relapse and reinfection. How do we do that? So suppose after the treatment, the patient uh, VDR has either decreased to might be one to two and might be later on it became non-reactive as well. But after a few years uh, or after some time of the treatment, if there's again a four-fold increase in the VDR titer, it can be either a reinfection or it can be either a relapse. So VDRL is more for disease monitoring to uh, look for the uh, response of the patient to the treatment. And uh, if the patient is having a relapse or a reinfection, TPH is more for confirmation so that we are able to find out whether the VDRL, which has come out to be reactive, if the patient is actually having a positive, uh, if, if the patient is actually having syphilis, or it, is it a false positive reaction? This is very important, particularly nowadays, uh, we are seeing a lot of cases of latent syphilis of unknown duration in pregnant females. And as we know that pregnancy is one of the cases where patients can have false positive VDRL or false reactive VDRL. So in those case, cases, it is very much important for it to confirm it by TPHA. Uh, 
The 4BK, if the patient is having latency, if they have unknown duration or not.